Hi, welcome to Vanita's Kitchen and thank you for joining us. What I'm going to be making today is a delicious molasses duff. Now this molasses duff that I'm making here today is a traditional Newfoundland and Labrador recipe. It is also a viewer's request. Many viewers have been asking for this over the past while. So what I'm going to do today is tell you a just a couple of these ingredients that we're going to be using here today and as well how you can make them. So let's get started. So of course what we're using is all-purpose white flour. You could use wheat. We're using butter or margarine and it's a half a cup. We're going to be using a teaspoon full of baking soda. We're going to be using a half a cup of raisins, but raisins is optional if you don't want to add it in this recipe. We're going to be using a cup of molasses, any type, the baking molasses, light, dark, it doesn't matter. You can uh, steam this pudding or this stuff in a pudding bag or you can make it in a pudding tin. So what I'll do now is start with the flour and butter. We'll get started. We're going to be using two cups of all-purpose white flour. Again, if you want to use a different flour, that is totally up to you. We're going to be using a half a cup of chopped butter or margarine. Then with your clean hand, you only need to use one, just pinch it together like this to start incorporating it all into the flour. So while I'm pinching the butter into the flour, I'm going to talk a little bit about this recipe because those of you that don't know what a molasses duff is, I'm sure you're interested in knowing. This is a dessert. It's also served with a meal, and here in Newfoundland and Labrador, we serve it with our jigs dinner. It's also called a boiled dinner, and some of us, we would call it a Sunday dinner. And I'll share that link with you so you would know what it is. Also, this is a simple recipe that our elders and our parents would use to actually uh, be a little bit more food to fill a large family so they'll make these um, molasses duff and of course I get a blueberry duff on there and I'll share that one with you to have extra food on your plate so if you're interested stick around here because this is a quick and easy recipe so after you've pinched all of that butter into the flour made it a little crumbly like this just wash up your hands to get ready for the next step. The molasses you could warm on the stove top or if you've got a microwave you can warm it in the microwave for 30 to 40 seconds and just to warm it. When I talk about a pudding bag here in Newfoundland and Labrador we use cotton pudding bags like this for a lot of our uh, meals and you've probably seen one on there for peas pudding and we've uh, done it in a bag and also in a pot and I'll share that link with you. But this air you can put after you've make, made this dough, this batter, you put it into these bags and I'll show you a little bit about that but I'm not making this one today. I'll talk a little bit about it so that you know uh, what I'm talking about so that you would know because maybe that's the way you want to make it. You probably want to cook it with your boiled dinner and tie it to the side of the boiler. We'll talk again about that. I'm using today a pudding tin and I got, I can share that link with you as well for you to know how to get this pudding tin and this one you can put, you can cook it on its own, not with your meal and this is the one we're going to use and as I go on that one I'll share that with you. So I'm going to nook my molasses and show you what I'm going to do next. So what I got here is the, the molasses warmed for about 30 to 40 seconds and one teaspoon full of baking soda. You just toss it right on into the molasses and then we're going to whisk this around just a little because what happens here now, this baking soda starts to work inside of the warm molasses. You see it rising just like it was uh, like a yeast and it, uh, it just keeps foaming. Let it foam like that for a little bit. And then that's what cooks our delicious 
uh, molasses duff. How long do you mean when you say a little bit? Is it a minute or two minutes or? Just until you see it foaming up like this okay. and that's enough. Sounds good. So Raymond, that was a, a wonderful question, but that's all you need to do. Once it's foamed up like this, you'll see it and then that's it. You'll just pour it on into your flour and butter mixture. And all of these ingredients, you guys, pretty much all of us got it in our cupboards because this is kind of your basic staple that you would have really, flour and molasses, butter. And now all you need to do there is mix that together. Mm -hmm. See, I've never made this duff before. Well, the next time you will. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. and as you're mixing this or folding it together, um, you can see the baking soda still rising in there. The baking soda is the only rising ingredient that we got in this um, mixture. And that's all you need. Now, when I say that you could use um, raisins, that's optional. Because some people like their molasses duff just like that, nothing else. But I like to add in the raisins. So at this point, add in half a cup of raisins or whatever you would like to put in there. Nuts or currants, even dried cranberries. That's totally up to you. That's all you need to do with that. Perfect. With a little bit of butter or oil, you need to, to put it inside of that pudding tin just to help it slide out just that little bit easy. And now we're gonna scoop up our batter. So at this stage is when we're going to take all of our batter and put into the, the pudding tin that we have got greased. Now in this case, if you're using this pudding bag, you, uh, we would say a prepared pudding bag. So what you would do with that is rinse it under the cold water just to wet it. And then after fill, put your, your dough on your batter into the bag and then tie it up. Now the reasons for not showing you this uh, method today is because I'm only just going to make the one in the tin but pretty much when you tie the bag like this you tie it on to the side of the boiler and put it into the boiler much the same as you do with your peas uh, peas pudding and I showed you that already on Vanita's Kitchen but this one today I like it done in the tin and that way it comes out the texture is just amazing and I'll let you decide. So just scoop up all of this batter into your pudding tin. And, uh, and as well, to answer Raymond's question, it takes an hour and 15 minutes um, to uh, steam these duffs, if it's in the pudding bag or if it's in the pudding tin. And that's all you need to do there. After you've put all that delicious batter into the pudding tin, so I'll put this here for now, um, you're just going to snap the cover onto that pot. And what we got here is a, a quarter full uh, uh, of water in the pot, just up to there, because now we're going to steam this pudding. And I always insert this grate in the bottom so that the, pe uh, the pot is not, I guess the pudding tin, is not touching the bottom of the boiler and that it keeps it lifted a little bit. But I'm going to show you that now. Now I usually put this into the water when it's cold. It's hot there now, but I'll just let it uh, drop down. And then I put the pudding tin on top of that grate and then after we put the cover on top but before I do that I wanted to explain the pudding bag if you weren't using the pudding tin you would put the bag into the water tie it to the side of the pot like this and it just sort of submerges to the top and it's just being steamed with the water not boiled because we don't need it to get wet because if it gets wet too much it'll soak apart and it'll get soggy 
So that's all you need to do there. That's if that's an interest to you to make it that way. But right now in the tin and then put the lid over like this. Now I'll explain a little bit about how long. So pretty much that's all you need to do with that and once you put the pudding tin into the boiler and put the lid on, you put it on a medium heat on the stove top and you, you steam it for about one hour to one hour and 15 minutes. Of course you can't fit anything else in with that. But here in Newfoundland and Labrador if we're cooking a jigs dinner or a boil dinner we got this little tiny bit of room on top of the boiler. Not much. And I'll show you that video. Of course I'll share it at the top left hand corner. And that's where you would if you're cooking with the pudding bag. And the reason why I'm giving you all this information because Raymond said that he's a little confused. Um, the reason why I'm giving you all this information, for those of you out there that want to cook with the pudding bag, pretty much cook it with your meal on top of the vegetables and let it steam like that. So pretty much tied to the side of the boiler when you're doing it. But right now, like I said, I'm not making it that way. We're doing it in the pudding tin. So meet me back here when it's done and I'll show you what it looks like. Welcome back to Bonita's Kitchen and thank you for joining us. I'm going to show you now our steamed molasses duff. So this little uh, tin got a, a nozzle there on it that you can help take it out. It's a little flip tag here. So you just pop it out of the water like that and then after just open up the lid. Now these little lids got a little nozzle there and you keep, keep twisting it until you find where that is and then pop it up. And then this is your molasses duff. So when you take it out of the ball or get your lid off, you may want to run the knife down like this just to see if it's loosened a little bit and let it rest for a couple of minutes just to work its way away, away from the sides. Now I'm going to flip it out into a plate. So put a plate on the top, your mitts on of course, and then flip it over onto the plate and then it, let it rest for just a minute or so and we're going to make a caramel sauce to go over it. So while we're waiting for just the molasses stuff, just to rest there for a moment, I'm going to make a caramel sauce. I'm going to do it in the microwave, but I'll share with you both. I'll share with you how to do it on the, um, the stove top and with the microwave. I'll share a link with you. But it's one cup of uh, brown sugar, two tablespoonfuls of butter, and a quarter of cup of milk. You're going to put this in the microwave for about 30 to 40 seconds. I'll show you what that looks like. So after you've melted it just a little with a whisk, just whisk around the ingredients and keep doing this until it starts to thicken. And after you've done that, just put in about a teaspoonful of vanilla and that's all you need to do there. That's your caramel sauce. Okay, so after it's loosened from the pudding pan then that's it this is your steamed molasses pudding and what you would use you can serve this with your meal you can serve this as a dessert right now i'm serving it as a, as a dessert and i'm going to take myself up a nice helping and put it on the plate and show you so i'm just going to cut off a nice little piece here now and put into my plate and show you still steaming and just look at this nice I'm gonna say delicious molasses stuff I'm gonna turn it your way and I'm going to just put a little drizzle of this caramel sauce around it and you could use also a cream or a thick cream with this as well and this is it as good as it gets I'm just gonna put a little dollop of the whipped cream off to the side and now I'm going to pour myself some tea. Okay, so I'm going to grab my tea. Now this is one that I did earlier in the day and you can serve it with, it's cold, you can serve it hot and this way 
This way you could have it as a dessert. This way you can have it with your meal or again as a dessert. Now I'm going to have a taste. I know that Raymond is waiting over there for a little sum. But, hmm, so moist. The texture, the taste of the molasses. Having it with the caramel sauce and the cream. Delicious. So delicious. So if you enjoyed our recipe today for molasses stuff and you're looking to make yours, the recipe is posted at the bottom of this link. Also, the subscribe button is there. And if you hit that link, each time we post a new video, you will get a notification. So don't forget to subscribe. You can visit us on our website, www.bonitaskitchen.com. You can visit us on our Facebook page and we share different, different up and coming events and giveaways. Plus we got viewers requests photos. You can send us an email at bonitakitchen at gmail.com. I know your time is precious and staying with us today and watching our video for molasses duff, we surely appreciate it. So from our kitchen to yours, thank you once again for joining us. Keep safe and have a wonderful day. Always an open door